basically what I want to talk to because this is not a political function. That's not what you're about. It's about protecting your rights and your constitution. Um, so I, the reason I was asked to come speak is before, if you don't know what happened to St. Charles County, we lost the sheriff. Now, I'm running for sheriff, but it's a whole different entity than what it was, well, starting in 2015. There will be an appointed chief over the patrol division, which is what protects you. And then what I'm running for is the sheriff, which is over the courts, prisoner transport, civil process. And what a lot of my guys ask me is, why are you doing that? Because you know my guys from patrol want to keep me in patrol. But what are the main reason that I'm running for it is, one, to protect what we already have from the, the, the bailiffs, the prisoner transport officers, you know, they don't want to lose their power, and I don't want to. That's, I came through the old school. I started in the jail the way you're supposed to, the way, the way I think you earn your way. <coughs> Start in the jail, work to the courthouse, and then go on, go to patrol. So the reason that I'm running is because I want to protect their rights because we're going to lose them. I mean, it, it, they've been lost over here in St. Louis County with that because if you don't have a strong sheriff in there to fight to keep those, then they're going to lose them. But off that subject, because now it sounds like I'm speaking politically to vote for me, but you can vote for me if you want. To. <laughs> uh, but what started this is last year, or well, two years ago now, uh, our current sheriff, Tom Neer, uh, was behind this deal to get us a chief of police, to get us out, basically to take the power out of your hands, is, is to simplify it as simply as we can. His reasoning, because I've been asked a couple times here, what was his reasoning behind that? His reasoning to us and to the general public was to take politics out of the department. Well, anybody that works in any, and not just police, law enforcement, but any job that you have, there are politics involved, correct? So we were fighting, and we fought really hard, and we, we, we lost by a slim margin, but we lost. And, and the reasoning that I put when I would go talk to people is, you don't want to lose control of the sheriff. If the sheriff is not accountable to you, who's he going to be accountable to? And in this case, it will be a chief. That chief will be accountable to a county executive who's accountable to nobody. I mean, technically, yes, he has to run for office, but he gets to make all the rules. And I want, so, so my reasoning for running for sheriff of basically out of law enforcement as we know it is so that while I'm in that position, I will fight to get this back. Now there's people that have petitions and there takes, I believe 16,000 signatures to get it on the ballot. Um, so if, if I, that's one of the things I want to assure you is that we have to fight to keep our right. If I'm, if, if that, what we call, what, what's been called the top cop, right. if he's not accountable to anybody, what's gonna happen? Or what's potentially could happen? And that's what I'm afraid of, okay? We have a constitution, we had a lot of people fight for us to get us to this point, and, and we don't wanna lose it. And, and right now in St. Charles County, as of January 1st, 2015, it's lost. Now it's a, not a hopeless cause, because you still have the right to get a petition going, um, that's a lot of work. But also, if you've got somebody in there from the inside, which is if I get elected, I will fight from the inside to get this change back. And, if, and one of the things that I've talked to, and I've talked to several people at the Republican Committee, is to get the people to put pressure on their county council people or whoever. Because if the constituents aren't going to vote them in, they'll do whatever you want them to do. They can get it on the ballot by just saying, County council people can get it put on the ballot without a vote, and then it can go to the vote of the people. Otherwise, we got to get all these signatures. And things. It'll happen, I believe, that because going around and talking to all, the, all the different entities in St. Charles County, I was amazed at how angry people are that they lost this right to vote for the sheriff. So um, this just goes along with the Second Amendment. I mean, you have the right to put that person in power that you trust, that's gonna protect you and not protect, per se, the government or whatever that is. We have, that's why Missouri has its own constitution, each state has its own constitution. So I just wanted to 
to talk about how, let, kind of make you aware of what's happened in St. Charles County. Um, I talked to Chief Fitch, who is now retired, or re resigning, uh, because he's the, he's the chief over here in St. Louis County, which is a police department. And I asked him a point, because the sheriff had him come over to talk to our county council and our county executive when this was trying to get on the ballot. And it did make the ballot, which is why we lost it. But um, Chief Fitch said, it's six of one, half a dozen the other. Politics is politics. So whether, so but, but the bottom line is whether you want to keep your right or you just want to give it away to whoever wants to appoint that position. So um, if you want to know what's going on in St. Charles County, you've got people here you can talk to um, myself. But if you are, if you are in St. Charles County, um, help us. Chuck Marley's got petitions going too. He's helping over there. But um, I just want to reassure you that, that I'm behind and for and always have been. So be accountable to you, period. The bottom line is to be accountable to the people of, of the county. So at that, is there any questions or anything? Yes, ma'am. Perhaps you could address on the constitutional powers and authorities that are given to a sheriff versus the chief of police. Well, based on the, the constitution is that the sheriff is what I said, the top cop. Mm -hmm. and basically has overall authority within the, that particular county. So when it came, if it come down to a catastrophe, the sheriff actually has over the overall power of what's going on, which is why all the emergency management and all that falls under the sheriff. So the chiefs are just a sub entity of the sheriff to simplify it. I mean, they don't answer to the sheriff. You know, each chief in each community is their own entity. But if in a massive thing, yeah, the sheriff would be. One of the questions I had is, as a sheriff, let's say the federal government were to come in and, for example, let's say you've got a farmer in St. Charles County and the feds want to come in and destroy all of his milk because he sold raw milk to his next door neighbor or something. And they come in and dump it all out on him. As sheriff, you have the authority to say, no, you can't come uh, into my county and, and do this. But as a, an appointed chief of police, without the vote of the people, do you still have that authority? Your, that authority would go to the county executive. And yeah. if it, technically, yes, would you still? The way it's the way that supposedly they have it set up, because from what I understand, there are a couple of lawsuits going on against this through the attorney general. And I don't know the specifics on it. I just know that a couple of people, I know Steve Abington is one of them that has filed a lawsuit. Um, but from the way we understand it in law enforcement at the department is that the chief answers to, to the county executive. So if the county executive allows the federal government to come in, you're gonna let the federal government come in. That's why we need to have an elected chair. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you so much for letting me come and speak. Thank you. Um, those of you who've uh, been here uh, a few times know that we have one of our old keepers who is very involved with this, uh, Mark Messler. Uh, also, about half of our membership is, uh, or at least half, is in St. Charles. And if you happen to be in St. Charles and you haven't signed the petition, make sure that you sign it tonight. But Mark uh, has been uh, working very tirelessly on getting signatures to get the sheriff back in, in, in St. Charles County. And I think Mark wanted to, did you want to say yeah. something? Yeah. Would you come up here? Sure. Give me a deal. I sure do, ma'am. <clears throat> I just wanted to give a brief history on myself. I know most of the Oath Keepers know it, but we have a lot of visitors. I've been working on this project for over two years by myself with another group of people starting with the Save Our Sheriff group, and it did lose by a 0.72% margin. I wish it never would have. I wish it would have worked a little harder back then so you don't have to beat the bush so hard this time. But uh, we watched the results come in at the bar in St. Charles, and we were just dumbfounded. There was a recount that was supposed to be done. So it's a, it's a very passionate thing for me because I don't want to lose elected sheriff, and I'm certainly for somebody that's pro Second Amendment and wants to be sheriff. Um, I didn't know about the second option that he said about calling this county councilman. So I'm definitely going to work on that end of it now. 
knowing that and try and get some. Do you think it could be done with witness forms too, or just calling them, bother them to death? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had a meeting with um, Tony Tawa just last week. Who's this? This guy is awesome. He doesn't even live in the district. He's from New Jersey, from New Hampshire, uh, from the Free State, and he comes down here to work on contracts. And he's been here for the last two years, and he's been wrapped up in all this for the last two years as well. He collects the most signatures on his own. He's a tall guy with an accent. You might have seen him out at soccer games, etc. He's collected over a thousand signatures just on his own. So I got to give him props and, and throw his name out there. Um, the, there's other groups I belong to. One of them is St. Louis County Liber or St. Charles Liberty Project, and that's the one that started to save our share. They started on this petition drive this time, but had a fallout with other people, and unfortunately, it's cost us our volunteers, and not everybody's as organized as they should be. So I've been coming here and everywhere else I go carrying this thing with me to get signatures. But not only that, I ask for help too to go door to door when it does warm up. Um, we need approximately 18,000 with an error rate margin for good signatures, bad signatures, and we have 2,000 right now, so it's only 10%. We've only got 16 more weeks to go until the July deadline. So in essence, we need 1,000 signatures per week. Wow. So when the weather does get warm enough, we're gonna be beating the streets to get these signatures. And I can give you a suggestion. My daughter and I were downtown St. Louis on Saturday, on Sunday for the pet parade, mm -hmm. and there were people walking through the crowd getting signatures for something. I mean, I'm not in St. Louis City, much less the county, so I couldn't sign any of the petitions, but there were people there. So my point to you is we've got a Cowbell parade coming up, and I don't know what your July date is, but we've got the 4th of July parade in O'Fallon too. So if you get people that's actually when we started with last July 4th we had a parade float in the parade in okay. St. Charles the St. Charles Riverfront we, down there? That's yeah everybody was in yellow try to meet oh, the color right. shirts yeah oh, and we were handing out flyers and collecting signatures afterwards but even from the get-go of that we just didn't have enough volunteers and that's the biggest problem we have as far as approaching it this way we just don't have enough people to walk now we did buy the voter roll and we know who we got to target for the districts so it's just not a willy-nilly let's go knock on everybody's door we're going to the voters who already voted on it showing them the original ballot measure and saying you've been tricked you've been duped do you remember this yes and 95 percent of them are signing it and saying yeah that's not what i wanted so i can't stress enough how much we need people when it gets warm again to go out and do this to make up for the deficiency of the time lost with the cold weather so do you have to live in the county in order to just collect no, you do not. But you have to get signatures from people in the county. So you're, you're, we've been to several different events. Um, Oktoberfest, we collected signatures. And there are a few other ones, I forget what they were. But we, we emphasize St. Charles County. And that's the only time we collect because we don't want to go to St. Louis and only get half well, the signatures. Right. 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 Yes, with, the, with the election cycle coming up, uh, there are plenty of politicians that have people out canvassing. Uh, Bob Unger is No, we haven't, and um, you know, I'd say that's probably one of our biggest downfalls that we've been trying to put this all on our shoulders. Mm -hmm. You know, just recently I started handing out these petitions because we're in a dire desperate need. And if somebody wants to collect them, we can give you walking maps. I've already talked to Tony, he's willing to do that. If you want to go around your own neighborhoods, if you live in St. Charles County and you want to go around your neighborhoods, we'll furnish you with the list. You go up and knock on the doors, we'll furnish you with the petitions. And it's very short and sweet and bold up here. It just says we want to keep the position of elected sheriff and repeal the, mer the uh, creation of the county police department. And this is our wording for the ballot already registered with a rich prisoner. So it's very easy to sell to people. You just need people to get out and do it. So that's my plea to all of you. If you want to do it, you want to do it in your neighborhood, give me uh, your name and email and I'll have Tony contact you. He'll email you a list. You can go print out at home. You can just walk and go get them. One last question. Mm -hmm. Uh, November. November, the next November uh, cycle, which will be before the creation of it, so there's still time to stop it. It'll be put in there in time for people to vote before it's actually created. And I know they've already started doing things behind the scenes, but we're hoping we can stop it. It's, it's definitely an important issue, as, he's, as Jeff has, Mr. Jeff has uh, explained, and I just didn't know how many, how many people knew how invested I was in it. Just, I just wanted to let you know.